I think the number one is the honesty, like what they expect from you every single day and what they want from you. And then if, if you're not – and honesty with every single player on the team. It's not you don't pick and choose who has uh, accountability and who doesn't. It's every single player is accountable for do your job. When they say do your job, that is the point. But the other thing is preparation. I've never been around a squad that prepares – the way that Bill Belichick prepares the team and Josh McDaniels as the offensive coordinator. Give us an example because we hear that all the time <clears throat> that there is no team better prepared for Sunday like the New England Patriots. How is that different than the way other teams prepare? Um, so we're getting ready to play against the Buffalo Bills, okay. right? And the scout report on the Buffalo Bills punter is like he doesn't have the best hands and it's going to be raining. So at practice, we practice the guy, the punter dropping the ball, scooping the score because it feels like it's going to happen in the game. And so I'm like, oh, well, yeah, it might happen. You know how Coach say something. Everybody's doing it right. Yeah. And sure enough, on Sunday, it's drizzling. He drops the ball. And you knew and what to do. No, we didn't do what he said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I looked at I was on the side. I looked at him like, who is this guy? You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like all little things like that. He prepares us like situational football. I don't think there's another team that's better in situational football. If something happens in a game that's like an awkward call, a once in a lifetime thing, yeah. we watch it as a team and we discuss like how to be prepared for those moments because the, everything he uses is a teaching moment mm -hmm. and he's teaching every single player on the team and he's just a really smart guy but then the way like Tom approached the game Josh approached the game Julian approaches the game Danny Gronk the, all the coaching staff it's just like everyone is just focused on the task at hand do you think it's better for to be a younger player would you have liked to come in and been drafted by New England or go other places Dallas Chicago some other places and then come there as a veteran player because it's easier to be successful as a veteran player or based on you would have liked to experience that as a rookie? I mean, there's both. I mean, there's two sides of the fence. Like, if you're there the full time, you may think, like, oh, you know, it's like, man, we need, you know, everyone else talking about how much fun they have. But the Patriots are super, super fun. I told guys when I got there and I've been on different teams, I was like, no, nah, this is great. Like, you guys are winning is fun. Like, all the other stuff ain't fun. You can have as much free time as you want, but winning is what's actually fun. Yes. So, like, for me, yeah, I would love to grow up in a system where, you know, had that kind of foundation and that kind of consistency and that types of, like, in an environment. The environment is consistent. Like, the people are there, there, the coaches are there. It's always the same. I've been in a situation where it's a coach this year, coach next year, different offensive coordinator, different, you know, tight end coach. So, then you kind of ups and downs. You're trying to get people to know each other again. It's hard to build that chemistry. That's the biggest thing there the chemistry is such a great chemistry the guys love everyone and most teams they can't really deal with new players coming in because they're not used to it mm -hmm. you come into new england patriots it's like hey well you're one of the guys already because guys come in and out so often mm. so the, you mentioned the honesty and the preparation the preparation jen is right is something we hear about all the time the example is a great one where he he knew the punter was going to drop the ball now the players didn't necessarily execute it but like and you talked about how any odd situation that happens when you're talking about that you don't mean something that happened in a Patriot game it could be a Bears Packers game from the week before but it was a weird call he'll drill you guys on it so you know when it happens with you guys correct I'm reading that the yeah, right way like there's a lot of things guys don't know like on a kickoff if the ball is close to the sideline you put your foot out of bounds and you touch the ball you get it at the 35 yes like a lot of young players don't know if on punt if they other team taps it back it's a free play mm -hmm. right. you can take it pick it up and run yes. it. it doesn't you matter if you fumble it. you yes. still yeah, can get the ball fumble, there it's a free play so there's a lot of things that guys Guys don't know that he always preps. As a veteran, I, I know it, you know, because I've been around for so long. But there's, like, a lot of little things that he always drills. And, like, those moments when they come up, it's like, this is a smart play. Like, because that's why everyone, the players are so smart in situations because they know what to do in those situations. The other thing you mentioned, though, is honesty. Like, give me I, – I, as a guy that's obviously never played in the league – I, I would assume. Hold on. Did you, uh, hold on. We have to, no. Did you know that Nick? I mean, just look at him. Did you know that the kid never played? In so the I try not to judge books by their cover. Exactly, exactly right. As an author, you should know yeah, that. Exactly right. I'm a children's book author, which is the only book you could judge by. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> good point. Good point. <laughs> so, but like the, the honesty, like I, I think some players probably don't like that. Like, some players, and maybe I'm wrong, like, don't like being told where they're deficient at, don't like being coached hard. What What is the difference between being coached by a team or be playing for a team that you're talking about? Honestly, it's one of the first things you said. And then you don't have to get into specifics, but other teams where maybe they gloss over some of the tougher spots. 
Like, I've been on teams where, like, the quarterback not held up to the same standard as other people. Like, mm -hmm. you know, everybody knows it. Everybody knows yep. it. Some players on the team that do certain things that aren't held to the same standard as other guys on the team. But in some places, it's like, whether you're the janitor or you're the quarterback, it's the same standard for the entire building, right? Yes. Like, this is what we expect from you, and this is what you need to give us. I don't care if you're sweeping the floor or you're throwing touchdown passes. So there's been environments where you and they's like, man, like, and it's bad because after a while, all the guys understand, like, they treat us differently, right? And when you feel like they're treating you differently, you start treating them differently. We, we hear so much about the lore of, of Bill Belichick. There's also Tom Brady, who seems to be held in such high regard around the league. Also, that teams, young guys are intimidated by him before they even get on the field. T just tell me a little bit about the way he is, how he carries himself, what, the way he is in the locker room to veterans, to younger guys. I love Tom. Tom's one of my mm -hmm. good friends. And, um... Example on Tom, um, we're getting ready to play the AFC Championship against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And they ain't stand a chance because of this night. Um, the night, we was, all we were having were night meetings because we played at night, and all the coaches leave, and Tom stands up in front of the team. And in that moment, he said a compliment for every single guy on the team that, that meant something from that guy actually as a person and a player from scout team to Gronk. He knew every single player, what they have been doing, how they're developing, what they're getting better at. And I'm in there like, I've never seen anything like this. Like, wow. he even, it was no, like, great, like, no rah-rah, any given Sunday speech, you know, right. Al Pacino, you know, anything yeah. like that. It was like... But it him, meant something to everyone. Every single player was different, the you know? The depth for which he knew the team, it was like Belichick, who happened to be your quarterback. Yes, and then he's just a fun guy to be around. Like, he's not a guy where he wears Tom. He's sponsored by Tom Ford and Aston Martin. Most guys like that, you feel like you can't hang out with, right? Yeah. But Tom is a great guy. He's the type of guy you want to have a beer. He might not drink beer, but if you want to have a... I don't mm -hmm. drink beer either, but he's a guy you want to <laughs> have a cup of yeah. coffee. He probably drinks avocado coffee. <laughs> <but> <laughs> he, just, he took one sentence and ripped the hell out of the guy. Yeah. He just doesn't strike me as, like, you see someone like Gronk, then you see Brady. I mean, does he have a sense of humor? Has he ever played a practical joke on you? Like, does he... Oh. Do you can you really full on laugh with him? Because you know how prepared he is, but could he like loosen up and unbutton he, a little he bit? He is loosen up and unbutton. He's just a fierce competitor, right? Mm -hmm. When he's on the field, he's competing, but in the huddle, he's one of the best guys to be in the huddle with because he had fun, but his idea is fun is like kicking your ass. Like right. that's, <laughs> that's his fun. Like, yeah, yes. we, that's how like we right. go out there and dominate, and he loves to dominate, and that's fun. I, I mean, mean, Tom Brady is a superstar. And and I try to tell people the only time he's really free is when he's on the field. Yeah. So, like, you can't expect him not to have that type of emotion. Two questions to you. You got one game to win, and you got good experience of this. You got one quarterback. You got either Aaron Rodgers or you have Tom Brady. I know you just told me the story about Tom Brady. I know that's hard to beat. The next question is, give me one stereotype of what we think Bill Belichick is and that you've learned about him that is totally opposite of what we think about him. Who's the best? And give me something about Belichick. First, the quarterback. I mean, if, if, I mean, I won a Super Bowl with Tom, so I'm rolling with Tom. I think that Aaron is able to do more with the ball than Tom is able to do. I've never seen someone bend the ball the way that Aaron bends the ball. Like, he could drop it in here. He could spin it. He could throw it above you. I mean, he, could throw, he threw me a no-look pass one day, and it hit me in the chest. I'm like, bro, you wasn't looking at me. He's like, yeah, i like to see if you was ready. I'm like, this is his scrimmage. I mean, he's like this. I'm like, oh, he's not, you know how it is. We're looking this way. I'm like, I ran a flat route. Then he's just like, Shh. I'm like, is that coming at me? Like, is that coming at me? So um, the way that he could do the ball, but, like, we, when you win a Super Bowl with somebody, like, that's the, that's the guy you go with. The thing about Bill that people don't understand, like, Bill, to me, is hilarious. Like, he's really, really funny. He just has, like, that Larry David type humor, right? Mm, and, okay. Um, he's, Thank you. He's highly Thank intelligent. Bless you. And, you and, and you, that, that motivates you. Because I think right now we're going through this thing with Josh Rosen and guys who are smart. Like, please remove that. Wouldn't you much rather have a smart coach and smart guys playing with than guys who make mistakes and guys who can't remember? Yeah, I mean, the thing about being an intelligent football player is, is it's easy to coach an intelligent guy. He gets it, right? He knows what he's doing. But just guys are interested in multiple things. I think that balance is what makes them good. And then when a coach understands, like, Bill didn't, Bill didn't say, hey, just come in and do your job. He didn't care if I was coloring or if I was drawing, if I was doing movies. They actually showed my movie to the, the team. Um, at the family day and things like that. So, like, his job is, like, can you help us as a football team? Are you not a distraction? And can you go out there and play? And that's all he really worries about. He worries about you being a good football player. So, 
And but like guys like Josh, like I'll tell guys like Josh, man, follow your dreams because football is limited. Like you get three and a half years if you're lucky. Mm. When you're done, like life is you the average lifespan for a human being is 79 years. The life, average football career is three and a half years. You have so much more life after football. Like this is just, I'm 31. I retired like life is just beginning for me. I feel like I'm just now starting to live. So these guys, they come in, man, read books, man, explore, travel the world, enjoy yourself. You earned it. You make this money, go to Japan by yourself, you know, go do all these cool things, you know, go surfing like Obama when he stopped being president. <laughs> hey, living his best life. <laughs> you see Obama, I'm like, man, what? I'm not mad at him. He had eight years of stress. Now he's out there surfing, <laughs> drinking Mai Tais, you know, <laughs> getting fanfare, right? grapes. I'm like, yeah, writing books, you know, speaking. He's That's, having a great time. It's a great outlook because you can't I'm sure there was a time in your life or I shouldn't speak for you I'm guessing there's time in your life where the destination the goal was pro athlete where it was and what and I would imagine there's a time where it's like wow I made it but like you just said you're 31 years old you got yeah. another 60 years of living you can't have you don't, you don't want to peak at 28 you don't want your you, all yeah. your best memories to be from when you were in your 20s when you're in your 50s and it's Go ahead. If you remember it as a football, if I remember as a football player, I felt at life, yes. right? And football was never the destination. It was just part of the journey, right? So it was never to be a football player. Like, I'm not trying, like, no offense, like, he's in a Hall of Fame player. I'm trying to be in the Hall of Fame of life, right? And this will take me a lifetime to do that. I want to be a Hall of Fame as a husband, the Hall of mm -hmm. Fame as a dad. Like, the football stuff, like, it's cool. It's going to be another guy comes in, break your records. Odell Beckham's probably going to do it, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> But there's going to be guys like those records are meant to be broken. There's going to be other guys. There's going to be another guy who's big, run fast, and could catch the ball. But there's not going to be another Martellus Bennett. And what I mean by that is mm -hmm. the way that I live my life and the things that I do and the person that I am. Okay, so the, the, the most fun we've had so far with you is just sharing stories with us that we're not privy to because we're here and you guys get to be in there. I mean, is there a better story than, than Rob Gronkowski and some of the shenanigans he gets himself into. Give me a good Gronk story. I mean, the, nothing shy of him, like, taking his shirt off and dancing on someone's shoulders on stage. We've seen a thousand of those stories. Man, Give me a good Gronk story. So when Gronk is a... First of all, Gronk is highly intelligent. So don't get it confused by the booze. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who's smart drunk? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I am smart drunk. So Gronk, like, okay, so I, I come to the Patriots. I'm moving. I got traded. And I don't have a place to stay. Like, I'm in between or whatever. I'm like, hey, and Gronk was like, man, you could just sleep on my couch. And I'm like, dang, bro, this Gronk let me sleep on his couch. So I go over to sleep on his couch and hanging out on his couch. And sometimes before, between games, I used to live in the city. I just go to his house and crash on his couch. And he's like the ultimate teammate, right? He wants you to succeed. He's like happy. He's like, man, I'm so glad you're here. It's not like a competitive thing. He's like, mm -hmm. man, you score a touchdown. Like, you know, it's great. Like, when he caught his 69 touchdown, <laughs> Which let is it, a big number it. in Gronk's life. Yeah, uh, this is this is life number. Um, <laughs> we know. So um, know. on the play, he didn't like it was running hurry up, and then he didn't get the call. So I'm looking at Gronk, and he's like, "Hey, what's the play?" And then I give him the signal, and he breaks a like 40, uh, 40 yard, 50 yard touchdown. And he first thing he's like, "Thank you." He, like he's not worried about anything else. <laughs> yeah. he's, like, he's like, "I can't hear, I can't hear." I was like, yeah. no, "Is this such a session?" Then he just takes off and runs down the middle yeah, of the field, yeah, scores yeah, yeah. the touchdown. Hey, Trey, wait, you see, he didn't give us the call. What right. it was? Though. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna give you the call. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.